1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12 says, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Um, in plainer words, um, as a Christian, you can do anything and not lose your salvation, but if you're going to do something that destroys you, uh, you do well to stay away from it. Um, if you sin, if you live after the flesh, you will die. All right? I'll be talking more about that in the future. The wages of sin is death. All right? You mess around with sin, it's not good for you. So up comes the question, are video games sin? I've spoken against video games in the past, and I was a video game addict for probably 30 years, a lot longer than some of you have even been alive, some of my younger viewers, teenagers in early 20s. Um, I was playing video games when you weren't even born, okay? So don't talk to me about, well, you don't know what it's like, and you don't, you know. Well, I will grant you, I don't know what it's like to play some of these new, more horrible, hideous, violent video games. Um, I think that that's a much greater level of sin because there's such a high degree of realism. Um, and again, well, then you can play old video games. Eh, careful about that. But I'm going to give you another um, reason why you should stay away from video games from a secular author. This man right here, Jaron Lanier, is the creator of virtual reality. Right there he is. He is not a Bible-believing Christian preacher <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. But this is what he writes. He's worried about people. You know, I'll, I'll thank him at least for that. He's saying, hey, you know, there's some real bad stuff about social media and about video games. Let's look at this. Where did video games come from? I mean, did all of a sudden somebody just came up with the idea and said, hey, you know what, let's make games and make them digital and, and we'll just have, you know, the very first video games and Atari and then Nintendo and then television and some of these others. I was around in the old days, okay, so born in 1975. But it says here, page 11, the core process that allows social media to make money and that also does the damage to society is behavior modification. Behavior modification entails methodical techniques that change behavioral patterns in animals and people. It can be used to treat addictions, but it can also be used to create them. These things modify your behavior. I mean, when you are really concentrating on a game, does your behavior change? Yes, it does. Well, no, mine doesn't. Yes, it does. Don't lie to yourself. Okay, I would have been in your position. I would have defended video games to the death back when I was an addict of them. Okay, that's the way addicts are. Well, there's nothing wrong with my alcohol. There's nothing wrong with my drugs. There's nothing wrong with my pornography addiction. I, I, I don't want to control it. Yeah, yeah, you're an addict. Okay, just admit it. You're an addict. And see, here's my point that I'm going to continue. I'm going to show you the proof in this book. Video games were created to addict you, to modify your behavior. That's why they created them in the first place. So to say, well, it doesn't affect me. You're a fool. The damage to, to society comes because addiction makes people crazy. The addict gradually loses, loses touch with the real world and real people. Look at the use of today. When many people are addicted to manipulative schemes, the world gets dark and crazy. Addiction is a neurological process that we don't understand completely. The neurotransmitter do dopamine plays a role in pleasure and is thought to be central to the mechanism of behavior change in response to getting rewards. This is what, why Parker brings it up. Behavior modification, especially the modern kind implemented with gadgets like smartphones, is a statistical effect meaning it's real but not comprehensively reliable. Over a population, the effect is more or less predictable, but for each individual, it's impossible to say. To a degree, you're an animal, animal in a behaviorist experimental cage. Do you really want to be an animal in a cage being experimented on? Some people get worse, some people are better. That's why you think that you're okay, you know? Well, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. You're still in a cage, animal. You're still addicted. It's still behavior. It's still, excuse me, modifying your behavior. Hmm. But the fact that something is fuzzy or approximate does not make it unreal. Originally, food treats were the most common reward used in behaviorist experiments, though the practice goes back to ancient times. 
Every animal trainer uses them, slipping a little treat to a dog after it has performed a trick. Many parents of young children do it too. One of the first behaviorists, Ivan Pavlov, famously demonstrated that he didn't need to use real food. He would ring a bell when a dog was fed, and eventually the dog would salivate upon hearing the bell alone. He didn't act actually have to have a physical treat, just a sound. Remember that. Using symbols instead of real rewards has become an essential trick in the behavior modification toolbox. For instance, a smartphone, smartphone game like Candy Crush uses shiny images of candy instead of real candy to become addictive. Other addictive video games might use shiny images of coins or other treasure. Coins or other treasure? Huh. Yeah, I wonder about that. Those, well, those, those are old games and everything. Those are really old games. I didn't even play those. Yeah, well, what are they using in the modern games? You get money, you get points, you get all these other things. You're, you're, you build up your weapons better and better, and you, you start out as a peasant. You eventually become a knight in shining armor and everything. It's rewards. And you become addicted to it. It's designed to be addictive. Oh, but not for you, because you're somehow smarter than the computer programs of the computer programmers of Silicon Valley, and the uh, the behaviorist psychiatrists and psychologists and things that worked for hundreds of years and philosophized about how to get control of people. You see, you go way back to ancient times. Leaders of countries always wanted; they always had that desire to control people. And if you really want to get right down to it, Satan is the father of that. Satan is the one that wants to con get control of you. And I um, hate to tell you, video games are a good way for him to do that. Well, not me. Uh, I, I can just play a game now and then, and I just walk away from it. Um, you're an addict. Okay. Um, when you know that something has been designed to addict you, uh, just get away from it. Period. It's going to bring you under its power. It's just as simple as that. I mean... A cigarette. What, what good is a cigarette in your life? There is no good thing that can come from a cigarette. All right. None at all. I would say some fermented, you know, alcohols and whatever else might be healthy if they're fermented properly and whatever, but you get the high level alcohol or the synthetically produced alcohol. What good is it doing you? Don't even mess with it. See, use your mind. You, you know, think I know most people won't. Most people just go on doing what they want and whatever else. But if you're a young man, uh, don't waste <clears throat> 30 years of your life like uh, I did. Realize that you've been scammed, that you're being experimented on as an animal in a cage by the behaviorist programmers out there that want to make a living off of you. They uh, want to con you in to keep buying their product. And basically, Quite frankly, you say, well, I, you know, how does it work, though? Because I only buy an occasional video game, so they're not getting rich off of me. Okay, but uh, you're not posing any kind of a threat to them. That's the real issue here. You can program an entire populace of people to be just docile, servile slaves. Young people that could rise up and, and, and take up arms against tyrannical government and take up arms against tyrannical systems, but they're too busy playing video games thinking that they're winning when in reality they're losing every time they turn it on. Well, they, they're not controlling me because I, I just, you know, they, I, I don't play them that much. And if you're playing them at all, they have you. I mean, let's just think about this from the, what he said there, the behavior is they put dogs in a cage. What would you think if you're walking down the street and there's a whole bunch of cages and a whole bunch of teenagers in them? And some man says, uh, excuse me, would you like to come on over here and spend some time in a cage? Well, maybe for a few minutes. I, I, I guess, you know, I, I can get out. Oh, sure. Yeah. As soon as you're ready, just come on here and just be humiliated in this cage here. You say, well, I wouldn't do that. You're doing it when you turn on the video games. Hmm. 
Uh, maybe you better just get to a point where you say, you know what, I'm done. I did. I grew out of it. I got to a point where I said, what am I doing? I'm wasting my time. And I used to justify, you know, why? I, I listen to sermons while I'm playing my video, video games. What good was it doing me? Ruining my eyesight? Ruining my health? Ruining my brain? Get away from video games. They are sin. There's no question about that. And I apologize for ever taking it too, taking too light of an attitude and whatever else. I didn't understand the full spectrum of the whole thing and it didn't, you know. And quite frankly, I was, I was cowardly. I didn't want to come out and, and hit it too hard. I'm going to hit it hard from now on. Video games are a sin. Um, you can't justify it. I mean, Silicon Valley, creator of virtual reality, Jaron Lanier, and he's telling you, yeah, the video games, it's about behavior modification. I pray you take heed to my warning and you run away from video games. Um, if you're not saved, you need to get saved and have the Lord help you get away from that addiction. If you are saved, you have no excuse. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.